Oi, 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 everyone, and welcome back to another video. First things first, unclench your jaw, grab some water, because today we're going to be talking about the Trickster and how to play him. The Trickster is an interesting killer, very much a love child between Plague and Huntress. With 60 throwing knives and a 24 meter terror radius, Trickster seems potent, but is initially very difficult to grasp and will inevitably get buffed or changed here in the coming weeks. If you're watching this video, do know that this video was made right after the Trickster's initial release, and he may be updated at some point in the future. But quickly, let's go over the Trickster's abilities. Trickster is a 110% movement speed killer that can throw his knives one at a time, or you can hold the button for a volley of knives. Using a throwing knife inflicts the laceration status effect and procs a circular bar to appear on the survivors, and this will start to fill. Each knife you throw will further to fill this bar. After seven knives, this bar will turn red and elicit a loud sound, similar to an eagle screech to let you know that the bar is turned red. What this signifies is that after one more knife, a total of eight knives, the survivor will lose a health state. It is important to note that if you go 15 seconds without hitting a survivor with another knife, the laceration meter will begin to decay until it disappears. Now, this is, of course, in contrast to someone like Plague, who can vomit just a teeny bit on someone and come back to them later after they've been broken by the sickness. The laceration effect does not proc mending, hindered, mangled, or any other status effects either uh, if you take a health state with it. Now, when beginning to throw a few knives as Trickster, he slows down to 3.68 meters a second, which is about 92% movement speed. Keep in mind that survivors move at 100% movement speed. Now, if you throw a volley of 30 knives or more at maximum speed, Trickster will slow even more, eventually hitting 2.68 meters a second or 67% movement speed, okay? So keep all of this stuff in mind when you're using Trickster. The Trickster's alternate ability, Main Event, also exists. After hitting 20 knives into varying survivors, Main Event can be activated within a certain window. Main event has a bit of a warm up and activation period before releasing an endless stream of blades at high speed, okay? During main event, Trickster does not lose ammo and is reduced to a flat 92% movement speed and cannot go lower no matter how many knives he throws. The ability itself has about 20 charges, losing about two charges per second, making it last only 10 seconds. When the ability is over or is canceled, there's a small animation that plays and you're locked out of your normal knives for 10 seconds. I hope that's not all too overwhelming. Now that we understand the ability, sort of, here are my recommendations on how to play the Trickster the most optimally, okay? My first suggestion is to not hold the button to throw the knives. While you could hold M1 after preparing the knives, this causes horrible recoil that slowly skews your camera back and forth while recoiling you upwards. Instead, my advice is to tap the button when firing daggers off at a slightly slower pace. This will help your aim and it will keep you from getting significantly slowed and reaching that 2.68 meters per second. Trickster's ability is very seductive to use, okay? We think of Trickster sometimes like Huntress, and you, we know that we love hitting a Huntress hatchet, and that the Huntress hatchets have a lot of lethality and potency that come with them. But Trickster shouldn't be played entirely the same due to that lack of potency, and instead should kind of be played similar to Plague. All right, because it takes eight daggers to wound someone, your best bet is to get as close as you can to a target before releasing your knives, especially in areas without tall walls or tiles or things of this nature. This is similar to Plague's playstyle, where to maximize vomit sometimes, you essentially spit down a survivor's shirt for 10 seconds. The reason you want to be so close is because if you cause laceration stacks to take a survivor health state, they get a speed boost, similar to a Huntress hatchet. Ideally, you would want to be close, uh, wound them with the laceration meter, and then follow up with an M1 attack. If they have nowhere to run or are easy to continue hitting, you could also just continue using the knives if they're between loops. When you do manage to get close to survivors and start hurling knives, do your best to body block windows and pallets and things like this so that they don't have an easy escape route. 
The other areas Trickster can really shine is near any pallet loop that has boxes, crates, or smaller objects that Trickster can shoot over. These are very unsafe for survivors, if your aim can of course keep up. Even if they crouch, Trickster can simply keep the knives out. Just stop throwing them, but keep the knives out so you move at that 92% movement speed, push the survivors to move again, and then land some more knives. Now, in a lot of cases, you could try to mind game these pallets, these areas, and get M1s on survivors, but in some cases, this could be very effective to expedite this process. Now, don't forget to use survivor pallet throws or window vault animations to your advantage if they are just a few daggers away from going down or taking a health state. You can land between two to three daggers in these animations, so don't forget that. However, do be careful because as survivors get smarter, they may not throw pallets or they may not go through windows. They may opt to instead keep running the loop and throw you off, causing you to waste a little time. In this particular case, try not to overcommit and adapt with what the survivors do. Now, when it comes to using main events, generally the consensus is right now you don't want to use the main event ability. This ability can be so potent if you use it to laser down a healthy survivor who is going for an unhook or multiple survivors who are just in bad places. For it to work, however, you do have to be close to survivors since your movement speed does drop to the 92%, okay? Usually main event, however, will just be ready to use in highly inconvenient times. And due to the startup animation, activation time, it could actually cost you the down on a survivor instead of just continuing to use your normal knives, proving to be entirely disadvantageous if you're already engaged in chase or if the survivors can get to line of sight blockers or make just enough distance. Now, that's a good parlay into Trickster's biggest weaknesses. Survivors who run early from generators and other hot areas and try to prevent you from getting close are going to be really tough to use daggers on. If they run early, you're not going to be able to close that distance and get the easy dagger throws, which means you're just going to be a 110% movement speed killer until you can get them to an unsafe loop. If they have tons of distance and you can foresee they will make it to an obstacle before you could deal out the eight knives, it's sometimes best just to not use the knives, maintain your movement speed as best as possible. Remember, Trickster's knives can be fun, but there are a few specific areas where you really just don't want to overuse the knives, like Jungle Gyms or the Shack. Wasting too much time at these tiles trying to land eight knives will waste far too much of your time in most cases. Your best bet is to play these tiles like an M1 killer, get the pallet out of the way, etc. Similar to Blight, it's very, very difficult to get Blight to work, and in some cases you can, but those cases have to be very specific. If the survivor only needs one or two more knives to down them by the time they reach the shack window or something like that, it's a little bit different. You could make this work, but you shouldn't be trying to get them fully lacerated from zero at the tough tiles like shacks and jungle gyms. Be aware of trying to overplay loops that have tall rocks and things of this nature, as you might be able to get a few hits here and there, but may generally waste more time than you need to if you had just went and used M1s and mind games, okay? So don't overcommit to using the ability in these areas either. Be able to identify when it's smart to use and when it's not. All in all, you should use the knives to get quick health states at a very close distance and finish the survivors off with an M1 or with knives if there are no obstacles around to protect themselves. Avoid overcommitting to knife usage. There are certain tiles that are just death traps for the trickster, and you shouldn't force knife usages here. Basic attacks exist for a reason. Don't be afraid to use it, okay? Only use main event if you're extremely close and are confident in downing the survivor very quickly. Again, not trying to use it in things like jungle gyms, pallet gyms, um, using it in four stops. Really, main event should be used between loops, kind of out in the open, unsafe areas. Now, when talking about add-ons, I personally believe that the best add-ons are Yumi's Murder USB Drive, which requires one less knife to fully damage survivors with the laceration meter, meaning seven knives in total. Now, in many cases, I actually combo with this with the Ricochet knives. In most cases, the Oddball Ricochet has actually landed and gotten the down for me, especially in tighter loops or some more difficult loops, okay? Otherwise, the yellow and brown movement speed add-ons are incredibly great. Uh, these push your movement speed up to 97% when you just start throwing knives or when you're in main event. Or if you're throwing a flurry of knives, they will uh, push your movement speed up to 71%. So keep that in mind. The iridescent photo card 
can be extremely strong and is borderline broken. It's very similar to like the iridescent head on Huntress. This add-on makes it so the survivor is exposed when seven blades have been landed, but the blades do not do any health states themselves to the survivors, meaning you basically run up on a survivor, get really close, fill the laceration meter and M1 them to, to, to down, to death. That's it, just once. Combine this with like Yumi's murder USB drive and oh my gosh, just easy match. I don't have much experience with the Death Throws compilation iridescent add-on, but it basically reduces the amount of laceration based on your proximity to the target. It appears to do half the laceration, 50%, but consecutive hits stack up to 200%. So if your aim is immaculate, this could down survivors extremely fast. That took four. <laughs> Look at that. Look at this add-on. Look at that add-on. Now, when it comes to perks, he's a pretty standard killer. I prefer to run Hex Ruin and Undying on him because of his 110% movement speed and he has to reload. It's nice to have automatic regression on generators instead of pausing to reload and to kick a gen. However, we have had many successful matches with Corrupt and Pop, Pop and Oppression, or just Corrupt or just Pop. Now, Save the Best for Last has been a fun one on him as well, but it's not a huge game changer per se, as I do get a lot of the hell states with the knives, I don't build stacks up incredibly fast. Now, his terror radius is 24 meters, so Monitor and Abuse is actually incredibly strong on him, reducing his terror radius to only 16 meters, very similar to Deathslinger. Combine this with something like Nurse's Call at Maximum, which would give you 28 uh, meters of aura reading, uh, that's, that's quite destructive. I've enjoyed Iron Maiden on him as well, um, which increases his reload speed at lockers. If you enjoy that, you can combine that with things like pop if you are kicking gens, okay? So what do you what do you think? What do you think of Trickster? Uh, have you played him this way? Does this help you? Does this give you a little bit more clarity and insight? I've had a lot of great matches. I haven't lost too many matches with him, but I understand a lot of people may be struggling on console or at lower ranks. So let me know what you guys think down below. And of course, I'll be praying to the entity to see you guys in the next videos.